Good morning, everybody. It is good to see everyone here. We're getting a slightly late start today, so we'll go ahead and get underway. Please bow your heads as I open us up in prayer. Dear Father, we thank you, God, for you giving us this time for us to come together, God, and to fellowship together and to worship and to praise you, Lord. We love you, God, and we thank you for your grace and your mercy. You are the Most High God. You are the Almighty you are our sovereign God, and we love you, and we thank you for all that you do for us, Lord. Please, God, continue to bless our church. Please, God, continue to teach us how to love each other, to love each other in the right ways, Lord. Thank you, God, for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Take a look at your bulletins for today. We don't have a whole bunch in there, but like I always like to remind folks, um, if you get a chance, take a picture of it and send it to someone you know that's not here today. It's a good way to just remind them that we love them, that we're thinking about them, and to let them know what's going on here at church. So please, um, if you get an opportunity, do that. In the, in the old days, we used to drop it in the mail, but I heard that stamps are like 75 cents now, so I don't know if that's very good. So just go ahead and uh, take a picture. That's better. Um, so if you take a look in your bulletin, Sunday mornings, we have Sunday school at 10 a.m. We are currently in the book of Genesis, and we're getting ready to switch to a new quarterly next after next week, and we'll still be in Genesis, but it's a good time to come and join our Sunday school classes. It's always good to be there. It's always good to fellowship in those classes. We get to discuss things and, and talk about God and get to know God better. So please join us for Sunday school class if you get the opportunity to. 11 a.m. is our morning service. This Tuesday, we do have a ladies' Bible study at 1 p.m., so please join the ladies for that at 1 p.m. If you, if you can, Wednesday night, we have Bible study for all ages at 7 p.m. And a Zoom link will be available in GroupMe for that, so that's, that's a good thing, too. You can join via, via Zoom. Um, if you go down through our coming up and notes, you see that on our building fund for last month, we did really good, $1,365, so please keep up the contributions. And then if you go down through there, these are, these are all um, things that we've talked about before. Free online Bible learning, the BibleJourney.com, that's a good tool to use to study the Bible and to go through and journey throughout the entire Bible so there's an opportunity there as well. And a big thank you to Reverend Mike Deer, who's been here um, in Pastor Randy's absence. And uh, I think everybody saw in the group me that Pastor Randy's doing a lot better. So continue to keep him in his prayers, but um, keep Mike Deer in your prayers too. And thank you, Reverend Mike, for, for being here for us and, and uh, helping to shepherd us while Randy is out. So thank you very much for being here. And uh, and Mary Jo asked me to remind everybody that um, we're low on bottled water. So the church generally will buy that bottled water from time to time, but anybody can contribute down there, and everybody takes advantage of the bottled water. So that's just one thing that she asked me to remind everyone of today. And so you can go down through your bulletin and look at the different goals and things that we have there. Another thing to remind you about is our Annie Armstrong mission. Our goal is $300, and you see the Annie Armstrong mission here on this side. Please remember the Annie Armstrong mission as well. At this time, I'm going to ask Debbie to come up and do our prayer emphasis. Good morning, everyone. Good, morning. Good to see everyone here today. We have several that we want to continue uplifting in our prayers. Randy, Mary Jo, Sally, Alex, Darlene, Mr. McGillivary, and Jackie. And last week we got a good report on Silas. We want to remember our church, the needs of our church, building, workers, activities that we have planned coming up, missionaries, the Alangas, the Greens, and Mike Deer as he fills in for us this month. And if you will, bow your heads with me as we lift these up in prayer. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this day and the privilege we have of coming together to worship you. We just lift these up, dear Lord, that are having health issues, and we just pray a healing hand upon their bodies. Just give them that mighty touch from you. Let them feel your presence. Let them feel your comfort and your peace as they are going through these um, health issues. We pray for our church, the building, our uh, 
events and different things that we have planned just continue to bless us, bless the workers as they come together uh, to reach out to our community. We pray for our missionaries, both near and far, and we pray for the Alangas and the work that they are doing in Africa, and we just pray for their protection as they travel, the protection as they do their work in Africa, and give them the boldness to speak your word, dear Lord. We pray for the Greens and the work they do in association, and we're thankful for Mike Deer as he has stepped up to do God's work and provide the messages that you would have him to, to deliver to us, and we just pray that you bless him and keep him in a special way. In Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. Good morning, church family. If you'll stand with me while we worship the Lord this morning. And our first worship song is called New Name Written Down in Glory. Darkness. 
Yes, we were waiting without hope, without light, till from heaven you came running. There was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets. To a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dust. If you know the words, just sing along. God from whom all blessings Father 
God with the morning's breaking light. Praise Him through the darkness of the night. Praise Him with every breath of life. Slap backs, go on, get out there. this time, it's a time of sharing or a time of testimony. If anybody has any words they would like to share with the church, now is that time. Thank
Well, at this time, I would like to encourage anybody that has a voice to go ahead and use it for God. Okay, um, at this time, I'm going to ask Roy and Chris to the plates, please. Roy, will you please pray? this time we are going to be reading out of uh, Mark chapter 12 verse 32 through 34 if you'll open up your bulletins and read along with me. Well said teacher, the man replied, you are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, 
with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just want to thank you for this day, for bringing us together, Lord, in this house, Father, that we would worship you, that we would praise you, Father, that we acknowledge you, Father, as the one true creator, the, our Savior, Father. Just thank you for everything that you do, Lord, and I ask that you be with our pastor as he preaches the word, Father, and that you would allow them words to penetrate deeply into our hearts and be written on them. Father, just continue to be with us and allow us to be molded into what you would have us to become, Father, and to keep our face looking upon you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Good morning again. It's good to be here. Thank you for coming back. If you were here last week, I hope many of you did come back. Uh, I guess I better put my glasses on. I won't be able to see that clock, and we'll be out of here about 1 o'clock. There we go. Now I can see. <clears throat> but I do uh, appreciate the opportunity once again to uh, help Brother Randy out, my fellow servant, and just continue to pray for him and uh, ask for his recovery to be quick and that he gets the rest that he needs. You know, I just want you to know that... Uh, you know, I appreciate the little music people going up here. You know, it's good to, it's, you're blessed to have someone to have your little singing going on. I know I've been in many churches where there's not been that many uh, in, that doesn't have this type of singing and musical instruments, and I appreciate that, and it's good to hear. And, you know, I was, uh, I think I was probably in the, uh, Mardell's one time, and I heard this song, and I kept thinking, I, I heard that song somewhere before. You know, where did I hear that? It was playing on the intercom, and I kept walking around shop, and I kept hearing it, and something didn't sound right about it, but I said, okay, I know where I heard that song. I heard it up here in the nations, and the young lady, I don't guess she, she went downstairs, I guess, but I want to tell her she did a good job. She, As they say on American Idol, you put your own twist to a song, and it sounds kind of better than... The, the original, and I remember that, the way she sang it, and I said, I like her version better of that song, and I was going to tell her, but she's not here, so y'all tell her that, or if she's downstairs or something listening, but she did a good job, and I appreciate that. I just like to hear her sing one of those songs, C.C. Winans, Always Faithful, or something like that. I think she'd sound good singing that song if she hasn't already. But I thought about that in her voice. Man, what a blessing that would be. But it's good to be back with you. And uh, if you have your Bibles, would you stand with me as we uh, honor God and his word? Mark chapter 12. If you have your Bibles, Mark chapter 12. If you're able to stand, if not, that's fine. Beginning at verse 28. And one of the scribes came and having heard him reasoning together and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. In verse 31 he says, and the second is like is like namely this thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself there is no other commandment greater than these and the scribe said unto him well master thou hast said the truth for there is none, none but one god and there is none other but he and to love him with all the heart with all the understanding with all the soul with all the strength and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifice and when jesus saw that he answered discreetly he said unto him Thou art not far from the kingdom of God, and, and no man after that 
just ask him any more questions. Father, I thank you, Lord, for another day, a beautiful day that you bless us with, Lord. And as we gather, Lord, to worship, to hear your word, Lord, we pray that you would just speak to our hearts this morning and challenge us once again to to be that example that we need to be. And Lord, we lift up Pastor Randy to you, Lord, that you continue to heal him, Lord, as he recovers and be with the family, Lord, as they take care of him, Lord, and just bless them this day. Again, Lord, I thank you for everyone that's here this morning. And Lord, would you just speak to our hearts, speak to us this morning in Jesus' name, amen. You know, last Sunday, we looked at uh, how, we sh- how our love should be for the Lord to God, and that we're to love him with all of our heart, our soul, our mind, our strength. In other words, our total being, that who you are right now, where you sit. Everything about you, that's how we're to love God in that way. And so also we looked at there's some different kinds of hearts. There was a, a, a heart of a hardness. There was a shallow heart. There was a cluttered heart. And there was a healthy heart. And I hope that as you look through there, we read through those last week, that you figured out what type of heart you have for God. And then I close with the remark about being a healthy church, about a healthy church. And to be a healthy church, you have, a, you have to have a healthy heart members, which is that as a member of Indian Nations Baptist Church, that to be a healthy member, you need to love God. You have to love God with all of your heart with all of your soul, with all of your mind, with all your strength. you got to love God that way. And that's why, you know, Jesus said this is the greatest commandment, the first commandment, love God and only him. No other thing. Don't love anything else. There's another, another thing that's more important than God in your life. And so now we continue on about talking about love. And you look there in verse 31. The command to love continues, and he says, And the second is namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is no other great commandment greater than these. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And he said, Oh, man, we love our neighbors. You know, that's one of the, you know, I think we can get away with, Loving God, yes, Lord, we need to love you. We need to love you with all that we are, what you have for, what you've done for us, what you provided for us in our life, forgiveness of our sins, eternal life with you. Yes, we need to love you that way. But love our neighbors? Are you sure, Lord? Love our neighbors? You know, it's, you know, it's a command from God. It's a command. It's not an option, if you're a child of God here this morning, it's not an option just to love God. You've got to love your neighbors also. It's a command. God commanded us to do this. And, you know, I was uh, a couple of years ago, we was at a community center there in Holdenville, and we were talking, and these are all Christians that go to church every Sunday, and we was all sitting there doing the function. We was in charge of it, and I forgot what the subject came up about, about people. You know, we like to talk about people, and... I said, well, you know, I read somewhere that any time you look someone in the eye, eye contact, whoever you look at, just think, Jesus loves them as much as he loves you. Jesus died for them as much as he did for you. He forgave sins just as much as he did for that individual. As you look them in the eye, wherever you go today, you go down and head to Boomerang to eat or Kentucky Fried Chicken down there, you can tell where I like to go. You go there, then, and all the cash, anybody there, gas station, you see them eye to eye, make eye contact. Look them dead in the eye and just think, Jesus loves them as much as he loves me. I told that to our group there, you know, all godly Christians, you know, sitting there. You know, one person said to me, <laughs> they said, well, God said that to you, not me. <laughs> he said, you, do, you can be that way. I'm not going to be that way. And, you know, that's not an option as a child of God. We're to love everyone, everybody. We're to love God that way. And I believe that God is displeased, is not happy with us when we disobey his command, when we're not obedient to his commands. And so 
you know, we're to love God that way. And, you know, we're to love our neighbors. You know, that, that's what he says. It's a command of God. And we know that's hard. I know that's hard as a Christian. And I believe you know that's hard also, you know, to love our neighbors. And that brings us to the question, who is our neighbor? Is it those who necessarily live on this side of me, this side of me? Is that our neighbors? You know, who is our neighbor? Well, Jesus, you know, he answered that question. If you look over there in Luke chapter 10, he talks about this, about the parable of the Good Samaritan. And we know the story. I'm sure you've heard this story many times where Jesus answering when one of the uh, religious leaders asked him a question. They were always attacking Jesus, trying to get him to say something so they could accuse him falsely. And But over in Luke chapter 10, beginning at verse 30, Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, and which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came a certain priest by the way which he saw him. He passed by on the other side. And then there came a Levite. And he did the same thing. He saw this individual, and he passed by on the other side. But then verse 33 says, But a certain Samaritan came, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he went to him, verse 34, and bound up his wounds, poured in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, his own animal, and took him to an inn and left him there and, and told the innkeeper, Whatever more it takes, you take care of him. I'll pay you. When I come back, verse 36, Jesus is still speaking. He says, which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? Verse 37, and he said, he that showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said unto him, go and do thou likewise. Jesus said, that's who your neighbor is. You know, go and do likewise. You know, as I was thinking about this, you know, I said, well, to me, get you, for you to get a better illustration of this, you know, think about downtown here. Was it Boomerang down there? And just think about at the end of the block there, there's someone sitting there, an individual. Dirty, stink, nasty looking. And who walks out of the Boomerang? Oh, it's the Methodist preacher. He just got to talking about loving your neighbor. The Methodist preacher, I say Methodist because if you don't know, when you go to Methodist, they talk about Baptist. So I'm going to talk about Methodist. And they didn't know when I was their pastor that I'm a Baptist. And I was the pastor, and I was sitting there listening to these other preachers, and here they were just bashing Baptists. And I'm sitting there thinking, don't, don't they know I'm a Baptist? But anyway, that's the way they do. So this Methodist preacher come out of the boomerang, He's seen that individual on the street there. He goes around across the block, jaywalk even, to get away. And then here comes the Methodist deacon. Just heard his pastor preach about loving your neighbors. He comes out. He looks down the street. There's that individual. And what did he do? Same thing. He jaywalked and get around the other side of the street. He didn't want nothing to do with it. Then here comes a Christian out of the church, out of the, out of the boomerang, full, nice and hungry, and got full, ate, and he looked down the street, and you know what they saw that individual, and you know what that member was, it was a member of Indian Nations Baptist Church, and you know what that member did, went down there, had compassion, went down there, can I help you, what can I do? Do you need help? Do you need food? And they showed compassion. They showed mercy upon that individual. And Jesus asked them, who was a neighbor? Who showed compassion on their neighbor? Who showed the love of Christ? And so give yourself a pat on the back. That Indian Nation Baptist Church member did that because you've been taught well to love your neighbor, to show compassion and so, you know, a lot of times we do that. You know, I failed in that area in my life over times. I'm sure we all have. But, you know, that's what 
he tells us here to do. The second commandment is thou shalt love thy neighbor as ourself. None greater. Love your neighbors. So, you know, at one time in our lives, we were like that, down and out in our lives. Oh, in Ephesians, you know, he talks about that. Paul is talking in Ephesians chapter 2. He says, at, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein time passed. Then he goes on to say in verse 3, wherein times passed. See, before you got saved, or even after you got saved, in times past, you were like that. You were like the things of the world. He says, among whom also you had your conversation in times past, in the lust of the flesh, the filling desires of the flesh, and of the mind, and by nature the children of wrath, but God rich in mercy. And so at one time, you know, we were like that at one time. But God, but God, someone came and shared with you the gospel. Someone care, came and shared love with you. You know, when I first, before I got saved, I was in high school. When I was a member up there. Well, I was a member there. I was a, attending the First Baptist Church there in Holdenville, you know, and I felt like I stuck out, you know, all the heckies in there. And around dark spot, said in there was me. I sat way in the back, you know, kind of self-conscious. I said, hey, where's all the Indians and the black folks? I'm the only one in here. But, well, I went to Falls Creek with them. I wouldn't say, but you know what they kept telling me? All these kids I went to school with, the high school kids there, all these little white kids, they kept telling me, we love you. We love you. Mike, we love you. We love you. All week long, from day one, Monday, I was ready to go home. I don't want to be around here. I'm tired of hearing that word. I've never hear, heard that kind of talk in my home. And then every single day, someone, one of them was saying, we love you. We love you. And I'm sitting there thinking, why would you love me? You know, I'm not your kind. I'm different. But yet, come Friday night when I walked the aisle down there to accept Christ as my Savior, you know, I didn't want to go home. I wanted to stay that Saturday morning. We packed up and everything. But it was because of these church people saying they loved me. They loved me. And that's what being a neighbor is. He says, love your neighbor as yourself. Well, who is my neighbor? It's everyone sitting next to you, on the other side of you, behind you, in front of you. It's everyone who's not yourself. That's who your neighbor is. It's everyone today as you go where about your business and you look them eye to eye and you see that. That's your neighbor. You know, a lot of people out there are hurting in this world, in our towns. A lot of people are searching and they're looking for to fulfill that emptiness that voidness that's in their heart but yet Jesus said love thy neighbor as thyself and not only that he went on a little bit further if you look over in Luke Luke chapter 6 you know what he says there not only love your neighbors but love your enemies Love your enemies. Oh, Lord, are you sure you, about this? Is this a misprint in the Bible? Love your enemies? You know, I don't know about you, but, you know, again, that's hard. Love your enemies. But that's what he says. Verse 27, Luke chapter 6, he says, But I, just as Jesus speaking, but I say unto you, here, which here, love your enemies, do good to them. Bless them that curse you. Pray for them which despitefully use you. How many of us ever do that? How many of us do have enemies? Do we, anybody think you have an enemy? And if you do, do you pray for them? <laughs> yeah, we probably, Lord, would you deal with them? Lord, would you get a hold of them? That kind of prayer? Bless them? Lord, they just cussed me. And they're persecuting me. And Lord, you want me to love them? You want me to pray? You want me to do good to them? Then he says it again in verse 35. But love your enemies and do good. Verse 36. Be ye therefore merciful as your Father also is merciful. Love your enemies. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. It's hard for me. I don't, I'm trying to think if I had any enemies. I'm sure I do. But I, you know, I had one in my life. 
And I try to be a good guy and get along with everybody, but, you know, every now and then I guess I cross, uh, cross paths with someone, and this individual, you know, uh, you know, he became an enemy. And I was a pastor in, at this time, too, you know, not when I made him my enemy, but it's before in my wild and woolly days. But yet, you know, as I got saved one time, I always thought, man, wouldn't it be awesome to just your last sermon as a minister that you just fall dead right here? I said, if I, not, you know, when I was young, younger, I said, Lord, I want to, when I die, I am pray that I'm serving you faithfully in the church somewhere. And Lord, would it be awesome if I would got through and say amen and just fall over dead right here behind the pulpit that I preached my last sermon. And you know, one time when I was pastoring then, and this individual came, and he sat back there in the back row, and I was sitting there, and I saw them. I said, Lord, I didn't really mean what I said, you know, because yeah, I didn't really want, you know, because that individual despised me so much. He shot me in the back and tried to kill me, and he went to prison, and he had a reformed heart, wrote me a letter, apologized and everything, and asked if I write a letter to the warden so that he can get out, so I did, and I, I, didn't, think, I didn't think nothing about it. And there he came, sitting on the back row, and I'm sitting there thinking, Lord, I was just kidding about dying behind the pulpit. I'm not ready this way. So, you know, I preached my sermon. In the meantime, you talk about being confessed up and prayed up before you get up here because, you know, someone despises you so much they want you dead. They shoot you in the back, and there he is sitting back there. So I got up there, and I got through my message, whatever it was, and then the invitation, we extended an invitation, and, and who got up and come walking down the aisle? That individual. And I'm saying, I said, Lord, do you see this? He's coming down the aisle. Lord, I, you know, I'm all repented and confessed up. And Lord, I'm hoping that he is too. You know, he tried to take my life. He come walking down there. I said, Lord, I guess this is it then. And, you know, my wishes were going to come true. You know, my last sermon at the church. And, and I got down. He come up to me, extended his hand. I shook his hand. He apologized for everything. He wanted prayers, and we prayed, hugged and prayed. This is an individual who shot me in the back, who wanted me dead. That was my enemy. And yet, Jesus said, love your enemies, not only your neighbors, but your enemies. Love them. And so here, when we do that, when we Love God with everything that we have, everything, our heart, our soul, our mind, our strength. When we begin to love God that way, then it trickles down to others. And that's why he said, Jesus said, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Look over in John chapter 13. John chapter 13, beginning as 34. Jesus is speaking again. And he says, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another. That you love one another, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. One for another. And that is love. That is God's love. And, um, and we can only love like that when God is the main thing in our life when we love him with everything that we are that's the only way to love and we're to love others because of what Jesus has done for us Jesus died upon the cross for our sins for the sins of the world yes he died for that individual as you look them in the eye today regardless of who they are they may be the town drunk they may be the drug addict. They may be the prostitute, the thief, may be the liar who likes to stir up trouble. When you look them in the eye, you see that Jesus loves them as much as he loves you. That's who our neighbor is. And when you love God like that way, man, you're going to love your neighbor, regardless of who they are, regardless of their lifestyle. Regardless if they're your enemies, 
you're going to pray for them. You know what? Best, I heard that uh, best thing to get rid of your enemies is to make them your friend. You know, that's one way to get rid of them is make them your friend. Over in 1 John chapter 4, beginning at verse 7, the Bible says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Then he goes on to say in verse 9, In this was manifested the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Verse 11, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us towards our neighbor. Love your neighbor. That's everyone besides you. Your immediate family, your uh, neighbors, neighbors that live next to you, anybody that you see around. Then I want to close with verse 19. He says, if we love him because he first, we love him because he first loved us. If any man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Verse 21, and this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God loveth his brother also. If you love God, you're going to love your neighbor. If you love God, you're going to love sinners. It doesn't matter who they are. So I want to encourage you, as we did last week, you love God with everything that you have. Today, he says, continuation of that is to love your neighbors as yourself. Not love, you know, regardless, love them. And I want to challenge you this week. Not only as you were challenged last week to love God, think about your heart condition, your spiritual heart, but also love. Yes, that unlovable, that unlovable person, that enemy that you may ha you have, that individual that talks about you, that discourages you, that annoys you, you know, how's your love toward him? And it's a command from Almighty God. It's a command. It's not something that, you know, it's not an option. You've got, if you're a child of God and you love God, just as the scripture says, how can we say we love God? We've never seen God. We can't even love our neighbors. The Bible says we're a liar. I don't like being called a liar. I try not to be. But yet God says, love your neighbors. Let's bow our heads. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word today. And, Lord, I would just ask that you just, as you spoke to our hearts, Lord, about love. Lord, it's, that word love, it's hard. It's a hard word. Lord, it's something that requires actions. And, Lord, you know, you know our hearts here this morning. You know, Lord, if we truly love you with everything that we have. And, Lord, you know if we truly love our neighbors. Lord, those who are despised in our communities, those who are looked down in our communities, Lord, do we love them? Lord, you've challenged us in your word to love because you first loved us. Lord, I pray for strength this morning. Lord, when we leave this walks, this building, that we go out to our community wherever we go, Lord, that you be, help us to be mindful Lord, help us be mindful of our neighbors, that they need love, they need compassion, they need mercy. Lord, they are seeking, they are hurting. And Lord, we have, as your children, we have the answer. And Lord, I pray that you give us the boldness. Again, Lord, would you just bless this invitation in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand, please. The Lord has spoken to your heart, you know, about love. It's hard. I know it is. I know it is. There's those individuals, your, their faces or names might have came across your mind as we read the scriptures. Do you love them? Do you love them? 
even those enemies, even those who persecute you, say all kinds of bad things. If the Lord has spoken to your heart, I want to encourage you to come. Come and come to the altar. Come and pray. Ask God for strength. Because only God can give you the strength to love like he does. You know, I know we fall short in many areas, and I believe this may be one, because as I look in several of our Indian churches, man, there's just disar- disunity, disharmony within our church. And something is missing. Something is missing. And that is love. Love for one another. Love for the unlovely. But you and I, you know, I, when I was part of the First Indian Baptist Church in there in Holdenville, we got out visitation and you know, knock on doors to get our members that quit coming. And, you know, it was the hardest thing because some of them say, you know, they gave their reasons. I even talked to one individual who said, is that what a Christian is? I don't want to be one. If that's the way church members are supposed to act, I'm okay. And that individual did act a lot better than our church family. But if that's what a Christian is, then I'm okay. I don't want to be one even though they had morally upright and everything. But the fact was, they did not know Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord of their life. And if they were to die, they're going to go spend eternity in torment. And so my answer to that was, you know, don't, you can't base Christianity on one individual. They might not even be saved. They might not even be saved, but yet they're a member of the church. They attend there. They may not even be saved, so you can't judge that. I said, why, why don't you become a Christian? Why don't you get saved and then you be the example? That's the only answer I have from that one. We have uh, members who are acting inappropriately, who are speaking inappropriately. And then the world is watching, the world is looking at us, and they see that. Where is the love? And I know it's hard being a Christian. I know it's hard walking, being the best Christian, especially in school. Young boys there, you know, young ladies. I know it's hard being the example in high school and grade school, you know, even in life, even in our adult life at work. I know it's hard. But yet, 1 John 1, 9 says, if we've, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. We just call out to Him. Call out to Him. Would you come? Let's be seated, please. Appreciate the opportunity and appreciate you uh, allowing me to come back this week. Uh, I guess there was a lot of not a lot of uh, fasting and praying going on this week, <laughs> brother. Well, I encourage you keep praying for Pastor Randy. You know, as he recovers and as he heals, pray for his family as they take care of him. You know, sickness is, uh, you know, recovering from surgery and you know, all this stuff. You know, it's it's hard, and I know his. He just cannot wait to get it back on his feet to come and be here with you again. So next week I'll be back to you, and I hope that you've been encouraged to love this week. Love. And as you remember, when you look at someone eye to eye today, know that God loves them. Jesus loves them much as he does you. It doesn't matter if you're the minister, the deacon, the faithful Sunday school teacher. You know, he still loves that individual. Let's stand. We'll be dismissed. Father, I thank you, Lord, for another day. And, Lord, we just pray that as we depart from here, Lord, that you just be, be everyone here. Lord, as we go about our daily afternoon business affairs, Lord, that you as a guide and direct us. And, Lord, most of all, help us to show love to our neighbors, to anyone, Lord, who may be in need of a compassion and mercy. Lord, that you give us the boldness. 
Again, Lord, I thank you for this opportunity. Lord, just bless, continue to bless its church and the nations. And Lord, as their ministry, as they reach their goals of building a new building, the, everything they try to do, Lord, Lord, I pray that you help them unite together and Lord, achieve. And again, Lord, I thank you for us, everyone, and just, Lord, watch over us throughout this afternoon. In Jesus' name, amen.